if you had sailed up the Bronx River in 1609, you would have seen huge thick forests, ancient forests, with huge American chestnut trees and tulip trees, all kinds of fish in the river, huge shellfish at the mouth of the river, you know, big, big oysters and clams. The Bronx River is a river that has a long history of degradation and pollution, and physical changes, and changes to the natural environment, to the animals and the plants that live around the river. And there's efforts now underfoot that'll probably take hundreds of years to fully implement, to try and reconstruct and rebuild the river from sort of the bottom up. One of the things that we do out here on the Bronx River is bank stabilization. And erosion control. We do some invasive removal. And we help bring back and restore habitat. When we're talking about restoration, um, what we have in mind is a picture from the past. And we are trying to bring the river back to that loop or that stage. One of the ways we can do that is by looking at historical maps like some of the ones I have here. So this map for example, it's from the American Revolution. There's a little note here that the infantry could cross here at low tide. Here's the Bronx River coming down here. These are all extensive salt marshes, nurseries for fishes, and things that protect us from floods and so forth. This is a map from 1851. This is more about real estate. You know, here's where O. Paisley lived and W. Watson. And then it shows what we're interested in, which is the Bronx River. Once we find the historical maps in a map archive or a library, we scan them and we take it into the computer and we do a process called georeferencing. So we try and fit the map to a set of coordinates like latitude, longitude, or something like that. One place that restoration is occurring on the Bronx River is the Concrete Plant Park. It's a former concrete factory. So here we have the Bronx and uh, have these aerial photos turned on. That is the Concrete Plant Park this white bit alongside the Bronx River. And if we zoom in, here's the subway coming across on the top of Westchester Avenue. And this green fringe here, that's actually a salt marsh restoration and, and bank development project. And if I turn on the historical reconstruction, you can see this all once upon a time was salt marsh, way back here, way up past the subway station. And this is forest up here and across the way was another big stand of forest and a salt marsh as nearly far as you can see. So we use all this kind of information to reconstruct the past environment. We take into account the physical landscape, the topography and water courses, and then fill in the biological parts, what the ecosystems were and then what the species that were living in those ecosystems were. By looking at these maps and looking at these reconstructions we've done on the computer, it gives people an idea of what actually might be possible. We're working on a shellfish restoration project. There are live oysters that live within this estuary environment, and we're trying to offer them more habitat um, to grow on. So we're just placing out some habitat structures today, clamshell wrapped in plastic mesh bags, and we're hoping that we see the oysters that are actually in this water land on our mesh bags and start to grow. Oysters were historically an important part of New York City's environment. They helped to filter out pollutants from our water, um, and they also form a reef environment, which creates spaces that uh, fish species can use, crabs will use for protection, snails. Um, so not just the oysters are offered protection by a reef, but many other creatures. Uh, so it's a very important habitat that we're looking to see if we can kind of uh, increase again in New York City's waters. All right, is everybody ready? Because when this happens, it's going to happen fast. It's going to be pretty much over in about 20 seconds. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Go, Dave. Here we go.
It's unlikely that we'll ever be able to restore the numbers of alewives to the Bronx River that historically occurred. But probably what's more important than restoring the n numbers of alewives is just having the species here to fill that role they had in the ecosystem. They are the real foundation of the food web. They're feeding birds and raccoons and river otter. So we're not just restoring the alewives for the sake of alewives, we're restoring the alewives for the sake of the entire ecosystem. When we try and restore an ecosystem, or a river in this case, we're trying to restore it so that it works for as much of nature as possible. I mean, so it works for the wildlife, things in the river, plants and animals, and for people. And it's not like you snap your fingers and poof, you know, salt marsh come back to the river. You know, it's a lot of hard work, you know, planting one plant at a time, little tiny restoration efforts, small victories, you know, that eventually will build up, will connect with each other and, and rebuild a river that, that we can all enjoy and appreciate. The health of the river is getting better. We've been monitoring the river and the results are getting better and better. I've been here for three years, but we have people from the community that have been here for over 20 years. And it counts more when the people from the community, they come up to you and they even tell you the change. Wow, I have never looked at this before. I mean, there used to be cars in here, motorcycles, and now they're seeing fish, they're seeing muskrats, they're seeing birds, they're seeing families of ducks. I want everyone to utilize this river. This is wonderful.